Good morning, friends. Oh, you're almost awake. Good morning, friends. Let's do it one more time. Okay, all right, good effort. Uh, so I just want to greet you first in the only name, in the strong name of the Lord Jesus Christ. His is a strong name. And if you're in need of strength, before we do anything else, I point you to the Master, to Jesus. There's sources of strength, but they're fake compared to Jesus. So I greet you in the strong name of the Lord. I want to tell you about something for fellowship, just uh, put on your calendar. We are going to gather at uh, Debbie and Dave Powell's house for a gathering over um, Labor Day. It's going to be Sunday, September 3rd at 6 p.m. And there's a sign-up we're going to have. We'll provide kind of the, the main. If you're a carnivore, you're going to love it. Uh, we'll provide food. Uh, but uh, if you would like to come and want to or are able to bring a dish, then you can do that. You can sign up out on the table where you probably passed Sandy. But again, that's September 3rd, 6 p.m. So that's coming up two Sundays from now. Now, how about if we pray? We pray to our Lord, and we pray in his name, and welcome him into the service, and then we'll offer him songs of praise. Will we just take a moment, Lord, in your presence to acknowledge that you, the Holy One, the Creator, the Ancient of Days, that you are with us, we thank you, Lord, that we have your promise that whenever even two or three of your disciples gathered in your name, that you'd join them. We're more than two or three. So we take you at your word that you're present with us. And Lord, the songs that we sing, the words that are spoken, this isn't a social club, Lord. We worship for an audience of one, the Holy One, you, so it's our hope that the words that we sing and speak and our thoughts would be pleasing to you because we have no one else that we can turn to as our Redeemer, as our rock. And Father and Son and Holy Spirit, we worship you as the one true God. And we pray to you, Father, in the name that you gave us, in the Master that you gave us, our Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad you're here. The Lord bless you as you worship. Listen for the Lord to speak to you this morning. He knows how to speak your language. I want to invite you to join Diane and Lacey in worship. The Lord bless you. If you would like to stand, you're welcome to do that.
shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art singing with us we need your help I we're gonna go into a couple of praise songs that I know the first one is firm foundation and our daughter Libby when she was here helped us to launch that here and we really haven't sang it since so we're gonna do that again and then we're gonna sing the goodness of God that I know we do know here but I just had to give you a testimony of a season in our life um, actually when we were discerning that we were leaving Washington and looking for where God had for us next it just seemed like the songs we were singing were um, like the anchor for me in those days and anchoring my prayers so much so that I started writing out the lyrics of words and you won't be able to see this but I have a firm foundation and the goodness of God and put them across our um, cupboards in the kitchen just to claim and say, I want to mean what we're singing. And um, so I just challenge you as we sing these songs, maybe they'll touch you in a way. I think that they're based on scripture and like scripture, um, we all can hear and get something different out of it. So I pray that God will speak to us.
moment that I wake up till I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God and all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so so the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire, the darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness goodness is running after, running after me. Your goodness is running after, running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after I'd like you to uh, look with me for just a moment at that stained glass that's right there at the top. As we were singing, I, my eyes went to that. And that's a depiction of the Lord in the garden prior to his arrest and the leading to his death. And we know that in that moment when the Lord was in the garden, he was having to surrender, right? Do you remember the prayer that he prayed? Not, not my will, but your will be done. The Lord is good all of the time. Sometimes that's obscured when we go through hard times. I was saying to Bob earlier, I, I'm allergic to pain. I don't know about you. I, I'm, I'm addicted to comfort and I'm allergic to pain. But sometimes the Lord, we, we, we may, might think that the Lord's abandoned us if we're in experience with pain, but he's right there. And it's when we surrender, it's when we say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. That's when the goodness of God seems to be magnified. And we understand it so much differently, don't we? 
when the Lord's with us in the pain. And I want to take a moment to pray. I, don't, I, I just wouldn't want you to come and say, you know what, nobody knew that I was really hurting. Nobody knew in that, in that gathering at church that, that I was in desperate need of somebody just agreeing with me in prayer for the Lord to meet me and help me. And um, I, I don't want you to walk away feeling like there was no, no help in being connected to Christ for that comfort. So I'm going to invite you to pray. You might be at a place right now where you're, you are, you're, you're in a season of light and you're in a season of fruit and it's, you're not particularly in much pain. Good. It'll come. <laughs> there, there's your encouraging word. God bless you. You know that, right? We, we go through those seasons. But would you be willing to pray with me and agree with me? Lord, for those that are here that are, aren't in the same season, they're in, they're in the valley of the shadow. You agree with me as we pray. And if you're in that valley of the shadow, with just the faith that you have, just the faith that you have, just say, please, Lord. And, and you can agree too with me in prayer. Let's pray together. That picture is beautiful, Lord. It reminds us of your surrender. Your choosing the Father's way over what, what may have just not wanting to go through that pain. And yet you chose obedience. You chose us. Thank you. And so we can pray with confidence knowing that you can be with us in the midst of the valley of the shadow where, where we really we face the pain and maybe even the fear of death. Lord, would you meet your son or daughter that is in desperate need of you just coming alongside and meeting them today? Even if there's just one here, Lord, today that Oh, they would say, I need your help, Lord. I want you. We agree together that you would be the God of all comfort and strengthen your child in the midst of the valley. And we ask, Lord, that you would make it, tr make it true that you would help them go th through the valley of the shadow. And we ask for this blessing in faith in you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, the Lord is going to take, no season ever lasts forever. The Lord will take you through that valley. And I want to encourage you to be prepared to look for others who are in that valley and come alongside with kindness and mercy and, and pray for them. Your turn will come to be the one that accompanies somebody else through the valley. Ushers, would you come forward as we receive our offering? I want to just remind you, this begins the new week of worship for us, our, our worship songs, our giving, our receiving what the Lord has. If This is for those that consider Living Hope their home church. Uh, as we worship, we, we encourage you to give yourself to the Lord sacrificially and cheerfully. Lord, we, we thank you for the way that you've provided for us. You've just been so good. You've been so kind. And we bless your name, Lord. We give to you cheerfully and we say thank you, Lord. Give us wisdom to steward all that you've put in our charge that belongs to you. And we say again, Lord, bless you. Amen. The Lord bless you as you worship. Okay, I get to introduce to you one of my dearest friends on the planet. Uh, Mark, do you want to come on up here?
or maybe you don't, I don't know. Um, uh, this is my friend Mark Erickson. Many of you have heard me talk about Mark, and I'm not going to steal his story because uh, in the time that he has with us, he'll not only share with you from the Word, and I can say that um, I know I've been blessed. I know a lot of people who are followers of the Lord Jesus, but I know very, very few who know the Word of the Lord better than my friend Mark. And so uh, it's a real honor. I, I am just been looking forward and, and telling you how much I've, I've been looking forward to introducing you. Mark and I first met in 1978. I was one year old back then. And, <laughs> and, uh, we were in high school and we played baseball together uh, for one summer in Great Falls, Montana. And then he went away to college and a year later I went away to college and he transferred to the college I went to. And really from there was born a kinship. And I would say that Mark is like my brother from another mother. Um, and I, I love this man. I love him. And it's an honor to have you with us. So we're going to pray for you and ask that the Lord would bless you. But as we, and I'd like you to agree with me if you would that the Lord would bless Mark and give him anointing. But would you also be willing as we pray to open yourself up to the Holy Spirit? Because I want to remind you that the Lord can speak to us in ways that we can understand him. The Lord knows your language. And so as Mark speaks, the Holy Spirit will be the one that we're listening for. Amen? Let's pray. Lord. Thank you. Thank you for the gift of brotherhood and friendship that you've given me with Mark. We ask that you would anoint him, fill him up, speak through him, give him joy. And Lord, we pray that you'd help us to understand what you're saying to us today. We ask in your kindness, would you speak to us in ways that we can understand you? And give us courage to follow you. We will, Lord, for your glory. Amen. Amen. Uh, the Lord bless you, brother. Thank you. I guess I'm on. <laughs> uh, knowing the word is one thing. Living it and obeying it is something else. Um, this is a friendly church. I feel welcome already. You know, very friendly. And those songs are good reminders, especially um, where I'm at right now, too trust him and that he will not fail. Uh, what I wanted to do very first, before I forget, is I wanted to thank all of you who have been praying for me. I really appreciate that. Uh, those prayers are not in vain. Um, they were much needed. So um, I just I wanted to thank everybody first. And there's possibly a few out there that are maybe a few years older than I am out in the audience, and I'm sure there are many of you out there who are much wiser than I am. <laughs> and you could be up here and I should be listening and you could be teaching me, but thank you so much for this opportunity to share. I really appreciate it. Uh, your pastor, Sean, uh, asked if I would share when I came to visit him here. And I thought that was very brave of him because of uh, the emotional roller coaster I've been on the last nine months since my wife went home to be with the Lord November uh, 8th of 2022. It'll be a year this November. Uh, it is so good to see you here in this church. Sean gave me a tour of the church and things big, the basement and everything. Whew. Um, because um, you're still seeking God. Uh, you're still trusting him. You're still coming to church. And uh, to be a Christian nowadays costs you something. And I hope I can say this, especially in Oregon. Uh, it's, it costs you something. Uh, when I was younger, it seemed like um, if someone's life was off the tracks or they'd kind of gone astray or they were struggling, the thought was, 
you need to get your life right with the Lord. You need to come to Jesus. You need to get, you know, back on track. You need to let him help you. And, and that was kind of the theme that, you know, always... then it seemed like it moved more to um, uh, Christianity is uh, kind of passe or it's outdated. Uh, we don't believe that anymore or this or that. And it's kind of irrelevant and that kind of thing. But nowadays it seems like... Um, if you profess Christ, you're the enemy. Uh, you're racist, you don't like this particular group, or you hate this group, uh, you hate people with abortions, uh, you're not tolerant, this, that, and the other thing. But that's not true. Uh, true believers, true Christians, the last chance I checked, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. You know, you Christians, you, you want us to love God and love people? Boy, that's terrible, isn't it? That's a, that's a, boy, that's mean, you know. But um, so it's not very popular nowadays. There are a lot of things that are more popular. Back when I was in 78 or 76, I think bell bottoms were the in thing, you know, and you just weren't cool. It's a lot different now. So um, it just encourages me to see you here that um, you're still seeking God, you're still trusting God, you're still in church, because it's not as popular as it used to be. Before you could kind of coast along, but it ain't that way now. Um, I wanted to thank your pastor, Sean. Uh, he didn't know I was gonna do this, but uh, just his walk with me through this journey. Um, when my wife died in November, it was dark, it was cold, it was one of the worst winters we'd had in a long time. And um, I met Melanie at George Fox. Um, I met her when I was 21, and I got married at 23. And I'll be 64 this January. And uh, we were just a couple weeks short of, uh, of 39 years of being married together. And I really, really miss, missed her. And it was, I knew I'd miss her, I thought it might be a little lonely. But I had no idea how depressed and stuff I would get. Pastor Sean flew out on his own dime, at his own expense, in December, I believe it was, just to be with me. He's called me, I don't know if it's been every day, but close, and he's prayed with me. So I just appreciate his shepherd's heart. Um, I appreciate all the time and energy he's invested in me. and. Um, it was just a blessing. And I know he's busy here and he's got a family too, so I didn't want to wear him out, but I'm just, I had to thank him. So, um, did, you, uh, did you ever notice reading through the scriptures that it seemed like the Lord just, he wasn't a very good salesman. I hope that's all right to say. Because every time there'd be this big crowd, he seemed like he would say something to kind of thin the crowd. And I know... Nowadays, you know, we're trying to be, you know, seeker friendly and we're trying to, you know, how can we get our numbers up and, you know, which is great. I want people to come to the Lord. I want them to hear the gospel. Um, Sean knew me before I was a Christian. <laughs> and uh, that's the story for another day. But um, I wanted to read, and uh, I'm getting older, so I have to wear these. Um, and I hope I don't wreck my ear thing, but that's okay. In... Uh, John chapter uh, 6, verse 26, it said, Jesus answered them and said, Truly, truly, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw signs, because you ate the loaves and were filled. Ouch. Um, you're not following me necessarily because of the miraculous signs or that I'm from God or that the kingdom of God is near you. You're more following me because it's a free meal and I'm feeding you. It's like, hey, Let's go listen to him. We'll get fed, you know. And um, let me read something else in verse 41. It says uh, some of the things that Jesus was saying. He said, therefore, the Jews were grumbling about him because he said, I am the bread that came down out of heaven. And sometimes I think folks think that the Lord was kind of like Mr. Rogers, you know, just everything was wonderful and lovely. He loved us enough to tell us the truth. And... In verse 66, 
of John 6. If you're trying to take notes, I apologize, because my style is really unique. <laughs> I know that, you know. Um, it says in uh, John 6, 66, as a result of this, many of his disciples withdrew and were not walking with him anymore. So Jesus said to the 12, you do not want to go away also, do you? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. And even in the, in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew, um, that, that's very interesting too. You know, um, it's uh, Matthew 5, 1 through 12. I'm thinking, Lord, you're, you're making it a little difficult for some of these folks. I think they thought it'd just be all sunshine and roses and stuff. And you're familiar with this, but I'll read, it says, in Matthew 5. When Jesus saw the crowds, there's the crowds again. When he saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And now, no, I would have been sitting there going, Poor in spirit? Okay. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Okay. Um, blessed are the gentle or the meek or the humble, for they shall inherit the earth. You think, well, is this how this is supposed to look? Is this how a follower of Christ is supposed to look? Poor in spirit, um, mourning, humble, gentle, meek. It's like, come on. I mean, let's, yeah. um, and then it, it gets a little better. If I was in the crowd, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Okay. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I like that. But then it goes on. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's right. Wait, what now? The, those who have been persecuted? Uh, I, you know, I just wanted to hear the good news. I... What? And then, in case you missed it, he says, Blessed are you when people, not if, blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. It's like, uh, I think I'm going to come back tomorrow, you know. Um, but it says, Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great. And in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So it's just very interesting. I, I came to a conclusion. Jesus wants true followers. He's not going to necessarily tell us just what we want to hear to increase the numbers. He loves us enough to tell us the truth and then say, are they still following? Disciples, are you still here? You are still here. Um, uh, to me, it's, it's easy to follow the Lord. Uh, I hate to admit this, but my wife were involved in church. She worked at the church. She had the senior ministry. It was called Steadfast, and we kind of lived at the church. And, and, but things were smooth, comfortable, not that painful. We kind of had a routine, a comfortable life, and uh, I like that. Um, it's easy to follow the Lord when all that's happening. It's easy. But how about if the person that you love the most on this earth is taken home to heaven and your best friend and you're depressed you're lonely, you're sad, you kind of feel like God's not as close as you would like. Um, do you still love him? Do you still follow him? Brian said, not too much baseball, but I have to throw something in. You might have heard of Pete Rose. He played for the Cincinnati Reds and a little bit for the Phillies, and we won't get into his character, but he was a good ball player. 
And he has more hits than anybody that's ever played baseball. More than Ty Cobb, Henry Aaron, go down the list. He's got more base hits and more hits, 4,300, I don't know, whatever the stat is. Pete Rose was quoted as saying, I would walk, this is not a cuss word, I would walk through hell in a gasoline suit to play baseball. And baseball is a great game, but it's a poor God. He would do anything to play baseball. Do we have that same passion for the Lord that I would, I'd be lonely, I'd be discouraged, I would terribly, terribly miss my spouse, uh, I'd be just where you wanted to give up, would you still follow hard after him? There's a song that says, um, do I love you for what you can do for me? Uh, do you love him only if things are going good? Or do we love him just for what we can get out? Or do we love him for who he is? He's our creator. He hung on the cross for us. Satan thought, if I take everything away from Job, I got him. He will curse you to your face. You know, no wonder why he loves you and serves you. He's got a huge you know, family. He's got all this money. He's got all these livestock. He's... Everything's going great. Who wouldn't? You built a hedge around him, you know. Take it all away and you'll see how much he loves you. And Satan thought if he took everything away, God then would really get the true picture. But Satan forgot that God was Job's everything. And you can't take that away. And those songs are good reminders that um, it, it'll test your mettle. There's a song that says, uh, Jehovah Jireh, you're enough. Well, when you lose your spouse and your daughters that you care very much about go off the rails, it'll test whether God is enough when everything else is kind of maybe taken away. I used to think growing up that when you die, uh, then you would find out if God is real. When you die, you'll say, okay, what I believed was right, you'll find out if God was real and if what I believed was true. That's not what Jesus taught. <laughs> he didn't tie, uh, teach that you'll find out when, you're, when you die. In John uh, 16, 21, excuse me, 14, 21, that's why I need my readers because I can't read. Um, in Matthew, no, John 14, then we'll get back to Matthew here. And I thought I put a little marker in here, but maybe I didn't. Um, 14, 21, Jesus says, he who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and I will disclose myself to him. Now it doesn't say, if you have warm fuzzy feelings about me, that shows that you love me. He makes it real plain. If you have my commandments and keep them, if you obey me, that will show that you love me. But the cool thing is, he says, if you love me, you'll be loved by my Father, and I will come and disclose myself to you. I will reveal myself to you. You can know me now. You can know that I'm real now. And if you missed it, just down in 23, Jesus answered and said, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our abode with him. He will sup with you. He will reveal himself. He'll make his home with you. You don't have to go, boy, I hope I believe the right thing. You can know. And if the truth were told, you can know him now, and you have to know him now. If you wait till then, it's a little too late. In Romans 14, uh, 814, excuse me, 814, that's my little marker was. In Romans 814, it says, for all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons and the daughters of God. For you have not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you have received a spirit of adoption as, we, as sons and daughters, which we cry out, Abba, Father, or Daddy, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. 
Some of my brothers and sisters are not really hip on Christianity, to put it mildly. They're very much against it. They post stuff on social media and how dumb it is to be a Christian and how blah, blah, blah. Um, and I'm like, man, they're talking about God like it's a garbage can or something. That's my father they're talking about. You know, how would you like me to talk about your mother, father? You know, he, we can know him as our father, as our daddy father. You know, the Muslims don't refer to God as a father. You can look it up. He's kind of this, you know, up there in the sky. And even Muhammad said, I don't even know if I'm going to heaven. He goes, you know, well, I want to follow someone that knows how to get there. I don't want someone that doesn't you know if they're going. Um, uh, so let me read in Matthew 22. I told you it's hard to follow. <laughs> Matthew 22. Uh, if I can find it now. There we go. 25 through 32. And Sean and I have talked about this a little bit. The uh, Pharisees and the Sadducees were always trying to trap Jesus. They were always trying to ask him these tough questions like, now we got him. You know, do we pay taxes? No, he won't know how to, there's no way to answer that because if he says yes, if he says no. But I'll just read this. Um, On that day, some Sadducees who say there is no resurrection came to Jesus and questioned him. There was the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The Pharisees did believe that there was a resurrection of the dead. Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection, which is very sad, you see. Oh, sorry. Bad joke. But um, uh, they questioned him, asking, uh, Teacher Moses said, If any man dies having no children, his brother as next of kin should marry his wife and raise up the children for his brother. So then they came up with this question. This lady married this person. He died. So the brother married her. He died. Another brother married her. Seven, seven times. Whose husband or wife will she be? You know, who will be her husband? Whose wife will she be in the resurrection if all seven have had her? You know? And I get a kick out of Jesus because um, he answered and said, You are mistaken, not understanding the scriptures nor the power of God. Now the Sadducees were the spiritual leaders of Israel in that day with the Pharisees and some of the scribes. They were the pastors, the spiritual leaders. I love how Jesus goes, well, you're not understanding the scriptures or the power of God, but other than that, you're not doing too bad of a job, you know, for the, because in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. But regarding the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was spoken to you by God? I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. He's the God of Sean McNay. He's your God. He's my God. We can know him now. He's not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. I used to mock this one gal. She was going to a Baptist church, and she said, Mark, I know that I'm saved. I'm like, you can't know that you're saved. Nobody knows. If, you know, God will judge and decide at that time. But later, when I became a Christian, I said, Susie, I apologize. You can know that you're saved. (laughs) So, um, my wife, Melanie, of 39 years, was a loving, caring, living, feeling, breathing wife, mother, grandmother, sister, follower of Christ, and child of God. I'm going to, I want to tell you first thing, this is empty. This is empty, so this is a temporary urn. I worked in funeral service for about 30 years. I was a PE teacher before that. Um, I have to blame Ed Burns, who was a pastor in the, in the Free Methodist Church, getting me into funeral service, but my wife was al- as alive as anybody in this room. She loved me to brush her hair, rub her feet, so forth. My wife of 39 years is in a box just like this. 
part of her remains are in the niche wall in Missoula, and some are in Whidbey Island, Washington, um, where her dad and mom are buried. God knows our frame. He remembers that we are but dust. We are not God. You guys have a little thing down in your basement that said, the only way God can show you that you're not in control, that he's in control, is to put you in a situation where you're not in control. And I kind of like to be in control, but there's nothing I can do about this. I know that I'm not God, and this side of heaven, she's not coming back. Um, my wife liked uh, a little house on the prairie, you know, with Michael Landon and all that. And, and uh, I was debating whether to tell the story, but I thought, I'm in Eugene. And, and, you know, and so it fits, you know. But I have a Eugene connection, too, because uh, I worked at the England Eugene Memorial Chapel, which is no longer there. Sean took me by, and it's gone. The Safeway's still there. But uh, Musgrove's Mortuary kind of absorbed all their records, and uh, they tore down England's funeral home. So that's what they thought of me, I guess. But I worked there, actually, it was three and a half years. I didn't realize I was there that long. And I even worked for Buell Chapel in Springfield for about three months with Gary Buell. My uh, oldest daughter was born in Newburgh, and my youngest daughter, Amy, was born in Eugene at Sacred Heart Hospital. So kind of a Eugene. And then I thought this story would fit because Michael Landon's real name is Eugene Orowitz, believe it or not. That doesn't say, you know, come on, Eugene Orowitz, I'll be, no, Michael Landon sounded a little more manly for the cowboy shows, you know, just Orowitz, I, but he was Jewish, and he got pancreatic cancer, and I hope I got all my facts, facts straight, I hope, but one of his children, I believe it was his daughter, when he was kind of on his deathbed, came to him and said, Dad, you, you have to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, you have to repent, and you have to believe that Jesus is the Messiah. And Michael Landon said, I guess I can hide that now. <laughs> um, he said, I can't go that far. I cannot go that far. I want to go that far. I want Jesus to be the king over me here. I want him to be the king over me there. I will willingly bow my knee here. I will willingly bow my knee there. And every knee will bow and every tongue will confess God isn't going to force himself on you, but there, every knee will bow whether you want to or not. I'd rather do that now. Um, when I was, before I was a believer, um, people would hand me tracts, you know, and Bible tracts and stuff, and I'd say, thank you. Loser. I don't do that anymore. Um, and Sean knew me way back, but... Um, they would, sometimes I'd heard this question, if you died tonight, would you, are you saved? If you died tonight, would you go to heaven? I'm like, I'm not dying tonight. That's not even a legitimate question. It's not even relevant. I'm, I'm not going to worry about it because I'm not dying tonight. But it's very interesting. My wife, um, it'll, be two, it'll be a year in, no, in November, November 8th. Um, she had cancer for about a year and seven months and they were treating it. She was doing great. She was still working. We were taking trips. We were walking. She was doing great. And the doctors said, we can fight this for years. Little did I know that one morning she'd wake up and had trouble walking from the bed to the bathroom or the bed to the living room. She couldn't catch her breath. And the doctor said, you got to come in right away if she's come in right now. It had moved to her liver and they figured to her marrow as well and it was causing blood clots and it was blocking her heart and she part of her heart was actually uh, dying it was um, heart failure they tried to thin her blood they tried everything under the sun chemo she was in the hospital 10 days came home for two and went home to heaven about 8 15 on november 8th no pain but i didn't know that within 12 short days of her find, of finding out that her it moved to her liver she'd be gone and I thought we had a lot more time. And um, did you know that in, in Oregon, give or take, 
I'm kind of like stats, but 45,000 people in Oregon die every year. 45,000 people die every year in Oregon. It's about 123 people a day. Easy to remember, one, two, three. In Eugene, in Lane County, about 4,000 people die a year in greater Eugene. That's about three to 400 people a month. That's about 10, 11, 12 people every single day. There's a good chance somebody has stepped into an eternity while I'm speaking. So it is kind of a legitimate question to say, if you died tonight, if you were one of the 12 people that died in Eugene today, would you go to heaven? Um, so I think it's a very, very legitimate question. I wanted to mention one more thing before I, I close. Um, Sean was such a big help. You, I, I'm not a huge, uh, I'm not a huge uh, Lord of the Rings fan. I, I'm not against it, but my daughters love Lord of the Rings. But you remember Frodo and is it Samwise Ganges? That's it. Sean has been like Samwise because he has literally put me on his back and carried me when I was very lonely. And um, do you remember that line where Frodo wants to quit? He just wants to give up. He's had enough. And uh, anybody ever feel like quitting? You know, everybody feel like giving up? You know? And Sam, I can't do it like him, but he goes, Mr. Frodo, there's still some good left in this world, and it's worth fighting for. So, um, God is still working in this world. He's still working at this church. He's still working in Eugene. And there's people that are still coming into the kingdom of God, and they're worth fighting for. They're worth driving from Missoula to share the gospel, you know. So, um... Don't think me too strange. That's your heartbeat. <laughs> Funeral director, you know. Then what? When your heart stops beating, what then? What matters then? What political party is going to save you then? What philosophy? What current popular way of thinking is going to help you then? My wife's heart stopped beating, but she was ready to go. She wanted to go. She loved the song, He Will Hold Me Fast, because my Savior loves me so. He will hold me fast. Let me finish with this. It says in, better get the readers, sorry. Plus, it's hard to see through tears. So, um, John 5, 39. Jesus always said a lot of interesting things that you can just read right over. Um, in John 5, 39 through 40, it says, You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. But it is these that testify about me. And you are unwilling to come to me that you might have life. When I went to George Fox and I went there to play baseball and I said, give me a single room because I don't want nobody telling me about Jesus. I don't want no one witnessing to me. I'm not coming unless I have a single room with no roommate. Um, and I thought Jesus was cool. And I had heard that he died on the cross. And I heard that he rose from the dead and you know, Easter and all that. You know, I knew that some of that, but I sure didn't know him. And um, what I would say is, come home to Christ. Come home to your dad. Come home to your heavenly father. And if you've done that, keep trusting him. Don't doubt him. He loves you. Keep loving him even when it's rough, even when it's not popular, even when people say, Oh, it was one of them, you know. I was one of them, and I gave my sister some money at Christmas. She said, well, you're one of the good ones. You know, oh, how's money? How money can talk. So I give her money, I'm all a good Christian. But um, you guys have been very kind, 
and thank you again for letting me share. And um, he's worth following. He never said it'd be easy, but it is worth it. And he loves you. I have to see my creator's face. I have to see his face. I don't know if in heaven we can hug him, but I want to hug him, and I want to kiss him right here. He's been good to me, and he loves you. Don't believe the lies. Even if everybody believes the lie in Oregon, it's still a lie. And even if nobody believes the truth, it's still the truth. So thank you so much. You were so kind. Thank you. us something to think about, Mark. So we're going to close with this song of, called Offering. It's not to take the offering, it's to say, I want to give my life as an offering to the Lord and that we want our praise to be an offering to him. So please join us as we sing this. You can stand if you would like to. There are days I'm ready to leave church right away. This isn't one of them.
going to ask you to sit down for a minute. Except for you. You you come on up here. Yeah. You better turn your mic on. Um, is he live? One, one thing I forgot to say, too, is uh, with the Lord of the Rings, uh, Norm and Lois and Myron and Lindy, Lindy all went on this hike to this lighthouse, and it, and it was Hobbit Trail or Hobbit, <laughs> so that would fit right in. So I, yeah, it looked, you know, the old gold trees there and everything. But <laughs> um, yeah, I, I just I was pondering and praying as Mark was speaking if I should ask him this question. And I knew if I did, it would extend our time just by a, 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 a couple of few minutes. But I, uh, I, I want Mark to come back and, and, and speak again sometime. Um, so if he's obedient to Jesus, he will. And if he's not, then he won't. Uh, so it's on you, big guy. Um, so uh, I, I knew Mark. Mark was three, three doors down in the same residence hall, same floor. Uh, in 1979, we played baseball together at George Fox, and uh, I, I saw, I saw what, I saw when it happened, when Mark surrendered, like the picture. I saw when it happened, and um, I want to ask a couple of questions of Mark, so that you can hear the story. Um, you came to Fox. You didn't want anybody telling you about Jesus. <laughs> it's the it's November of 1980. Uh, now, a year after you've come, you're in your second year at George Fox, and you have some teammates invite you to a concert. Would you tell us about that? Sorry to keep you late, but I'll keep it. Well, short. I mean, don't give them the short version. Don't. Yes, yes, yes. I would give you the yes. Uh, a guy named Dale, who was on the baseball team, he was a, cha uh, a transfer from Yakima Community College. He was a pitcher. And uh, this gal named Hilly, and then another gal, I don't remember her name, but she had long black hair, and she was really pretty. But anyway, and remember, this is way back. And, and they said, you want to go to this Christian concert? And I'm like, I do not want to go. And I thought it was some guy playing guitar, singing something. I, I said, no. He goes, so-and-so's going, and she doesn't want to be a third wheel. I thought, no, I can go. I'll go. All right. So my mo motives were not pure. But I went to that concert. It was Keith Green. I don't know if you heard. And I'd never heard the gospel quite like that. I'd been reading it at Fox, and I'd been reading the Bible. And I thought, Jesus is cool, but I'm living my life. You know, no thank you. But at that concert, do you want me to get the... I do. The, okay. It does not have to be an emotional experience for everybody, but it was for me. And I'd been reading the Bible that year at Fox, and then through the summer I was reading the words of Christ in red, saying, what does he have to say for himself? And so I knew everything that Keith was saying was true, because I'd read it myself. He wasn't making it up. And I started losing my cool because I felt like God was, it was getting under my defenses. And here I had Dale, baseball player, and this gal, and Hilly, and um, I thought, I'm going to lose it. I, what's going on? And so I closed my eyes like, no, just don't, don't, don't. And I could picture Christ on the cross. And um, it was like an atom or a molecule of his blood floated off in the breeze and landed on me. I've never felt so clean. I've never felt so forgiven. I never felt so loved. And I was bawling my eyes out. I thought, well, there goes the coolness for the team. But I've never been quite the same since. And um, I have not always been a perfect son, but he has been a perfect father. So, so um, the first time I saw Mark at George Fox, I knew it was a Christian college, and I wasn't expecting him to show up. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm pretty good with words, and I saw him, and in surprise I said, the first time I saw him there, day one, Mark Erickson what are you doing here? And I don't blame him, because he knew me in high school. Well, and, and later, after Mark had, had surrendered his life to Jesus, <laughs> again, real good with words, I said, you know, Mark, um, I knew you back in Great Falls, and I wouldn't say that you were a Satan guy, <laughs> but I, 
I never thought you were really a God guy. Uh, and right. wow, any, any other way you want to encourage Mark, Sean? <laughs> but I will tell you this, I've heard it from his mouth this trip just in the few days he's been here. Jesus is worth it. He said it over and over. But he doesn't just say it with his, he's, none of us are perfect. No one. No one is perfect. But I, I give witness to you that I've seen the man have a long obedience in the same direction. Not a perfect obedience, but a long sustained <laughs> obedience of following, repenting when the Lord convicted him, turning back to him, following him closely. I want to say to myself and to us in response to the word that was given and what Diane and Lacey just led us in, we now step into a new week. We don't know when this will stop. But I know this, your, heart, your heart's beating. And it's beating right now, and so is mine. So we have a new week in which to offer ourselves and bring an offering of ourselves to Christ. So I want to encourage you, take some time this week. Don't starve yourself spiritually. Take a little bit of time to feed on a little bit of the Scripture just day by day. It doesn't need to be a lot but it'll be the best that you feed on. I promise you that. Feed on the Word in small chunks day by day. Stay the course in your faith in the Lord Jesus. Don't give up. Jesus is worth it, and He will, He is, and He will be with you. Amen? Amen. Now may the Lord bless you. Really bless you. May He hold you fast. May he keep you. May he make his face, the face of love, to shine down on you so that you would know you are loved. God loves you. And may he give to you a peace that the world could never give to you, his shalom peace. May you receive it from the Lord this day and this week. Be blessed, friends. The Lord bless you. You're dismissed.